Hey guys, prepared wander out in the woods today, and I wanted to uh, talk about uh, micro kits and downsizing gear, and and some of the things that I carry in my haversack. And uh, you know, it's always uh, kind of a a battle or a challenge for me to figure out how to carry the least amount of gear when I'm out in the woods to make my trip a little bit more comfortable, and also just to downsize so I don't have to have like the largest you know biggest pack there is especially in the summertime uh winter time it's not it's not such a big deal because i can carry a larger pack with me and i usually have more gear but in the summertime i like to carry uh, a haversack or a very small day pack and so the challenge is always downsizing my gear and getting it into something that's a little bit more uh useful and one thing that i've been putting together and working with lately is a a condensed fire kit that still is very robust, has everything I need in it, but is small enough to throw into my haversack or put on my belt. And this actually was a pouch that I, uh, I used for a, a small survival kit at one time, but um, I've since changed around that a little bit and up to my survival kit, but um, I really wanted to get my fire kit kind of under control. And so this is something I could grab and throw in different packs. Um, another piece of micro gear, that um, I've become very fond of is really a good small folding saw and I haven't really found anything better than the open now for its size and um, its performance it's just it's an amazing little saw and uh, if you guys have never really used an open L saw I really encourage you to go out and try one they it, you know the wood handle um, is just pretty cool Definitely for a bushcraft kit, it looks nice. It you know kind of fits the, the look and feel of a, of a traditional kit. Um, this one, I've uh, sanded it down a little bit. This beach handle, and um, put a light stain on it, and then did some um, some burning on it just to give it some character. And then of course uh, put a nice leather lanyard on it. But the great thing about this little saw is that it has a locking mechanism, and uh, it works really well. Uh, to control that blade. I feel very safe with it. It's certainly not gonna give me any issues and uh, It's you know open L they just make really nice stuff and it's very sharp right out of the box um, And it's a little saw that'll last a lifetime and the great thing about this is you know if you're using running small stoves wood stoves or whatever uh, You can get a little campfire going with doing these things. So we're gonna use this today as part of our scaled down kit You know, another thing uh, that getting my cooking kit is always a challenge, getting it down to a, a smaller size. And the last video I did on the uh, canteen shop, uh, which is now Lost Wild, is they're using their canteen uh, set. And it's a great way to scale down your cooking gear uh, because with this little package, you have your cup, your stove. A lid and it all nests in your water bottle and you can put it in inside of a traditional canteen pouch so it's another way of just scaling down everything all right let's take a look at the contents of this fire kit piece of fat wood pocket bellows for getting the fire going small flint and steel kit and that's got flint, uh, there's a piece of chaga, a small beeswax candle, several pieces of flint, a striker, and then down below I've got my uh, char cloth that's all been already charred. And then up here I have cloth that's ready to be charred. So with this little kit in itself is pretty much a micro fire kit, but pretty handy. And plus it's just fun to play with traditional gear. Uh, Fresnel lens from Survival Resource. Bic lighter. Uh, homemade petroleum jelly on uh, cotton balls. Great fire starter. That's kind of a neat little gadget. 
never seen one of these before. This is a match safe, but this is a, a traditional marbles match safe, um, probably from the 20s or 30s. It was given to me by a buddy. Um, it's really a neat concept how these things work. So you unscrew them like this, and then it flips open. And then you can take your match out, close it back up. You can actually light it on the side right here. It's got a striker built into it. So probably not the most waterproof uh, match safe, but it certainly does work at keeping everything contained and stored. And then in the back of my kit, I've got uh, some Gorilla Tape, which is nice. Um, if you want to catch shavings onto it or use the, even that as a, uh, a fire starter, but it's just nice to have in my kit anyway. And then up here is some water purification tablets. So a real nice little micro kit that kind of contains everything I need it to have. Uh, certainly going to be able to get a fire started in many different types of conditions with this stuff. So that's the whole goal is to have multiple ways of starting a fire. Um, and having redundancy, but also different types of tools that will work uh, in the woods in any condition. It's a pretty clean cut and that's you know almost halfway through in very short order and this is seasoned maple most likely possibly oak I mean, I wouldn't want to cut winter firewood with this thing or try to build a shelter, but for starting a fire, uh, this saw is more than capable. Um, it's just as capable as my Baco Laplander. You know, one thing I've gotten away from um, putting in my fire kit is a fire steel. And the reason that I don't um, always have a fire steel in my kit is because often I'm carrying a fire steel on me um, or on my knife sheath. Um, but more than likely, I'm gonna have this in my pocket. Um, I really am getting away from small fire steels. The more that I go out here and do this kind of stuff, the more I don't like small fire steels. They're great for backup, of course. Um, you know, a small one, throw in your kit just in case. But um, trying to start a fire, especially if you have large hands um, with a little fire steel is just it's really difficult and um, it gets to be a pain in the butt um, I want something that I can really get a good solid purchase on um, and then I can drive uh, sparks off of this thing and you know, I can really bear into it if I have to uh, so I've started carrying this big monster fire steel and then also there's another fire steel that I like to throw in my pack which is um, uh, You've seen before it, it has a magnesium combination rod on it and a handle that's wood that you can actually shave the wood down because it's a it's a type of wood that actually uh, is a fire starter as well. Um, so that you know these those two are my favorites. They're nice and large, uh, but those little itty bitty ones, even the Swedish fire steels, which are very capable. I mean I've used them for years and years and I have them attached to a lot of my knife sheaths. I just don't like them as much as I do like this thing. And this is one of these monster fire steels I got off of uh, Amazon. And then threw this into a handle that uh, a buddy had made for me. Uh, this is like stacked leather uh, handle that he'd put together. So I just tapped it out and, and dropped this in here and then put a little, uh, uh, little JB weld to hold it in. And it's held up great. Um, certainly it's heavy and it's a monster, but you know, you put that in combination with a good fire kit and, um, can definitely get some, uh, get some fire going. Now, one thing that 
also I love about the open L saw is that uh, it has a very uh, nice sharp spine to it and it is a great fire starter. I think I just lit my lens on fire. Holy crap. But you can see it really showers the sparks. So, you know, you don't always have to have a knife blade with you or something to strike this if you have your little saw with you. It really just does a fantastic job. do a little uh, fire off to the side here to cook my coffee on using an S-bit tab in the canteen shop before Lost Wild canteen stove so I haven't got to try that yet using that espit as the starter and then I'm going to put some larger sticks in here keep the fire going
So another part of that micro kit that I've been assembling is this Lost Wild uh, pocket grill. It is fantastic. Just a nice lightweight piece of kit. Um, just the right size. Doesn't need to be much bigger. Any smaller wouldn't. It would be kind of difficult to work with. Definitely big enough to grill a piece of meat on. You just need to prop it up uh, with a couple logs or some rocks, and you're good to go. And then the Lost Wild Canteen Stove, in combination with that, is a great way to brew up some coffee on the trail. Once again, a small kit. Takes up very little room in my uh, haversack or my day pack. <laughs> 